Now I realize that I am between you and performance. So now I know why you stick around. You stick around for the performance, right? Okay, so now let's make sure. When I take a, a second look, I see that I am the youngest one in this room. So then I can just mess around with no problem. But today, the topic the organizer asked me to do is the how or what to do when things are bad. How do you keep loving, doing what you do, especially when things are bad? Now, these two adjectives or these two nouns, love and badness, these are the two things that have kept everyone busy from the beginning of time. All the philosophers on earth have tried and tried and tried just to define and help us what it takes to understand happiness or to deal with badness. Now, the speaker before me right here, he just talked about a health situation, maybe a health crisis. Now, to start with, I will be in the next four minutes, I will be pretending as if I knew the answer to everything. But before I do my pretension, I want you to keep and thinking along with me. What can be bad? If you already have clothes, shelter, and food, and maybe a little good health, what else can be bad? Now, I want you to look straight in the eye of your partner in a group of three. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and then I'll point at you randomly. So the clock starts now. What can be bad? Give me a situation. All right, let's do that. 30 seconds. Talk to your partners. What can be bad when you already have food, shelter, and clothes, and good health? You know that as a professor, I am very good at picking students who don't listen. <laughs> All right, I guess the time is up now. Lady, may I have your attention? So what did you discuss? What can be bad in your idea? Mental health? No, can be bad. No, about, about the usual situation. Everyday situation. Don't you feel like doing all these things bad at the moment? I have an idea. Lack of access to clean water. Inequality was a good one. Yeah. Conflict or wars. Okay, uh, now let's let, let, let me hear from Chen Fu. What can be bad? When you already have shelter, clothes, and food, what else can be bad? Now let's put this way. I don't want to do one more one. Now you see, for example, if you are a student, now this, this just come in, <laughs> this past week, all my students were having exams, right? At Camerad Business School. They just had exams. And usually on a exam date, you don't have just one exam, you have three or four. Now what happened if the very first exam in the morning, you failed, you feel like, okay, I did something so stupid. So what do you do? Are you going to carry on that feeling of sadness throughout the day? Or you just say, wait a minute, I have three more exams to take, take on. So therefore, I'm going to have to create a safe box in my head where I will lock it up. Or I will create a safe graveyard in my heart where I will bury that sadness forever. Because at least for today, I have three more things to do. I cannot dwell on being sad. So now let me move on to the second idea of love. What do you do? How can you keep loving doing what you do even when things are bad? Now, please don't forget, what is bad for you is not bad for him. What is bad for you is not bad for her. So in other words, something that feels bad is not because it is bad but it is because you think so. 
It is because you feel so. There is nothing that can be universally so bad. Everything demands particular attention. Now, come to the second item of the day, love. I will be a fool if I told you I know what love is, right? I guess you young guys know more than I do when it comes to love. Hold on a sec. Now let me just get someone here in the audience to tell me exactly what he think what love is. Okay, come on, take it away. What is love? Uh, for me, what is love is that you care about it a lot. Now we say love is care. All right, so now you, what is love? For me, I think honesty. Yeah. It's part of love too. Okay, now one more. Can I get someone who is not Cambodian? What is love? Come on, give it to us. <laughs> uh, a feeling? Yeah. I get one more. All right, now here, right here. Sitting so still. What is love? Okay. Oh, don't tell me you never felt so. Love can be anything, right? Not just uh, sex. Uh, for me, love is a relationship between uh, two person. <laughs> all right, no problem. Now, I'm sure all of us give our own definition, right? Oh, I know, no, no. She said, no, no, please don't tell me that, Dr. Virak. I have another definition. All right, go ahead, say it. Um, I think love is service, selflessness. You serve and, and someone else serves you. And try to cater to your needs, emotional needs. This is at least something that haven't been said by others. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Now, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, every day we say, I love you. I, 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 I don't remember. I, I stopped counting how many times I say that to my wife, so many times that she doesn't trust me anymore. So, so now you have to always keep thinking, probably everything has its own time and place. But for me, love is creating. I don't feel I show enough love unless I create something for people around me. Now, in my job, currently, as chairman of the biggest business school in the country, what do I do every day waking up? I have about 3,000 students to look after. I have about 250 staff to look after. So what do I do? Some staff ask me, we almost never seen you. Where are you? I said, well, I am outside creating love for you. <laughs> so how do we do it? I go down meeting ministers, ambassadors, CEOs, because those are the people that create the linkage between you, future grads of CAMET, and the world out there. And then they realize, OK, then don't come to school. Just go out, because we want you to show love as much as possible outside, because that works for us. So that has worked for me. Love is creation. But then you, staying here from various religious backgrounds, whatever background you come from, it does not matter. But for me, a Christian, I think and I believe love has two adjectives. Now, I don't know what about you, but I know what I want to say, that I want to know what Jason said. Now, give me two adjectives that define love. Um, sure. Um, two adjectives. Um, missing. Oh no, wait. That's not an adjective. Well, a beauty. Beautiful. Being being be beautiful. Being beautiful. Um, uh, kindness. Being kind. Kind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have one of my own students. <laughs> Um, hard working. Uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> Caring. She often got a lot of award on speaking engagement. Now, for me, I only look look at two adjectives. Okay, love is passion. Number one. And number two, not resentful. Not resentful. Being patient carries a lot of work. Imagine when you teach something to your little girl or, or little boy, how much time does it take you just to try to explain to him or her even the simple things? And they will keep coming back with the same question. But why is it that? Why, Papa? Why? I said, but I already told you why. Yeah, but why? So now, you see, if you love your kid, you just forget about time out there. Because love is patient. You have to show patience because that is one way of showing appreciation to those around you. But then... You tell me, well, you know, I have only 24 hours a day. I work and I sleep and I eat and I do all the stuff. So how much time is left for me to actually be patient when time is always an issue? Well, you might get angry, right? Sometimes I get angry sometimes in my boy, forgetting that he's only 11. But then I realize, okay. <laughs> When I was your age, I must have made the same mistakes all over, all over, and all over. And I, I'm sure that my parents had been, always were very patient with me. And they never, even once, say that I am wrong. Okay? So, not being resentful means even when people have done something bad to you, you feel like, you know, that is you, and I refuse to accept that image of you because I love you even when you say stupid things to me, when you say unkind things to me, I am not going to feel resentful. I do not accept that image of you. I only accept the good image that you and I share because the time that we have left on earth is short. Now, back to the very question how to keep loving what you do, especially when things are bad. I want to leave you with this image. If you remember from your physics class, all right, the smallest thing, what is the smallest thing? Down to molecules, molecules. And then you say, well, if you smash the molecule, you get atoms. Is that the end of the world? No, if you keep smashing the atom, it goes down to electrons and neutrons and, 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 and neutrons and protons. Is it the end of the world? No, you keep smashing the proton, proton and neutron, you get to what we call quarks. You know how small a quark is? It's, its size, well, I can't show you physically because it's so small. It pen to the power of minus 18 meter. So that means 0 0.0000170 and 1. So that is small, it is a quarks. And then on the contrary, you look up at night, see the stars and everything. You want to know how big the universe is. Well, I don't know how big the universe is, but I can tell you how fast light travels, right? Anyone in this room know how fast light travels? Anyone? It's so fast that it can cover 300,000 kilometers per second. 300,000 kilo, 300, kilometers per second, meaning light can travel seven times around Earth in one second. Now, if you multiply by 60, you get one minute, right? And you multiply again by 24, you get a day. You keep multiplying, you get a year, you get et cetera, et cetera. And the distance, the volume of the universe is 94 billion light years long. So now you can imagine, from a quark, 10 to the power of 18, negative 18, and to the universe, one is too small and one is too big. So when something is so big or so small, they don't matter. 
because our mental ability uh, it relevance goes down to none. We cannot, as human, conceptualize or see or feel how small or how big that is. But you, you, and you, you are neither big nor small. And that's why you matter. And that's why to keep loving things, even when you feel down, is always to remind yourself the love is manifest when you keep creating. Don't stop thinking. Don't stop doing what you do. So always keep creating. And that is the real answer that I can give you today. Thank you very much.